Hey, welcome to vlog number 10. As promised in my very, very first vlog, I mentioned that I kind of wanted to do some interviews with like people I've met through my travels and people I've known for many, many years and you know, just people I think have really interesting stories that I think you would enjoy as well. So my very first interview is with Jackson Jeffcoat. I've known him since he was three and a half years old and this is how I remember my sweet little Jackson. Look at that pouty face. <laughs> He'll probably kill me for putting this up there. Look at that little face. No, since yeah, he was three, three and a half years old, I met his family because back in the day, like many moons ago, when I lived in Dallas, I worked at a sports bar called Randy White's Sports Cafe, I think it was called. And I started hostessing there. My girlfriend Nicole was also working there and we became friends there and her sister is married to the great Jim Jeffcoat who was playing for the Cowboys at the time and I knew nothing of sports I <laughs> I just saw that there was a hostess needed at this restaurant and I started working there and I had no idea who any of the sports people were that came in there and nor did I know anything about going to games or anything like that. So all that I know now of sports is because of the Jeffcoat family. <laughs> so I'm so grateful to still have them in, in my life and I'm still very close with them. I'm still very close with Nicole. So I've really been able to watch the kids grow up. This whole family is really accomplished and the kids have just done really well. I'm so proud of them. But Jackson went on to become a professional football player, played for the NFL. Um, he now plays for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and they just brought in the championship, the Grey Cup, which is the equivalent of the Super Bowl in Canada. I'm so proud of him and his accomplishments and I just thought his story would be really interesting to you. So I went to Austin, Texas to interview him and I think you will really enjoy it. So let's go to Austin and go see Jackson. Let's go. Oh my god. Look at all the puppies. Miss Nala and Ruby. They're the cutest. Say hi. Say hi, puppies. This is what we do with our uh, off season. <laughs> <laughs> this is my baby Jackson. Known you since what? You were four? No. Three or four? Four. I don't know. Since you were a wee child with your. When? Yeah. So, all right, so you're in Austin. What made you want to come back to Austin after everything that you've done? Well, playing at the University of Texas has been, like, it was a great experience. I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, I think it's a great decision but, for me to go play there. And so I moved around a couple places, but I always felt like Austin was the best place. It's like home. It felt comfortable. I was surrounded by people that went to UT, like myself. And then, Teammates moved back here, so I got a lot of friends. Obviously, you have a big social network here. Yeah, and then for business network as well. From getting my degree in corporate communications, I'm able to network with different people that can help with business ventures that I, I want to do and get into. Yeah. So, what is your earliest memory of football? My earliest memory? This is a question I've actually got asked a lot. Uh, earliest memory probably would see my dad win Super Bowls. Uh, he went two back to back, 92 and 93 with the Cowboys. And I remember just kind of seeing confetti coming down uh, from the sky when, uh, yeah. when they won. Just him giving me a kiss, taking me on the field and having me around with me and my older brother. Yeah, because I, I mean, being, I was at their house a lot when you guys were little. And I don't remember you guys really like playing football outside or like, you just really had just a very normal childhood. But I also felt like uh, when you got older, your mom kind of didn't want you to play football. She was very concerned about, of course, you getting injured. So you were, you played basketball for like since when? Since you were. I played basketball ever since Jenner played basketball, basically. My older brother Jenner. So you start, I think you started playing basketball, what, at like eight or 10? 
No, younger. Younger? I played well, you played t-ball when you were really little. Yeah, I played t-ball as well, soccer. Um, I played a lot of sports. Uh, but basketball, whenever my brother started playing, I always wanted to do what he did, so I tried to get into it. And he w- he's good. Yeah, very good. Jared is, he played in college. And, his uh, whole family's incredible. I just, you know, I always enjoyed playing with him and being like him. And so that's, I think he helped push me. He doesn't know this, but he really helped push me to be like the best I could be. Because even though he's my older brother, I never wanted him to be better than me. And he was always so good at basketball. And he was always like more talented in basketball. And so he just pushed me to be better and better. Let's see if this- He was really good. Yeah, let's see if this is gonna get me over the top to be better than him. Oh, well, I don't know if he knew that. No, he doesn't, but (laughs) it's my guy. So didn't you, when you were recruited to UT, didn't they kind of, didn't they say something about you could play both? Yeah, you know, growing up, like, basketball is my love. Like, I love basketball. I wanted to play professional. And when I became like a sophomore in high school, uh, football really started becoming something I liked and enjoyed. Yeah. Like I played it, it was fun, but it wasn't like my love. Basketball, I felt like what I was going to get scholarships in, what I was going to um, play professionally. Yeah. And then I came to UT and I really wanted to stick with playing basketball because I played both in high school and along with track. And uh, it was just something I, I thought I could really be good at. Yeah. Yeah, but they told me I could play both. But I had a high school spring my freshman year in college. And so I wanted to heal that up. And so I didn't go play on the basketball team right So away. that was too much of a risk for inju- you know injuries on one side and then not being able to play the other. And... My body just felt so beat up. Like, yeah. It was really beat up when I, um, after a football season. I was so tired and so beat up and I was like, I still gotta go to school, I still have to do that. I still got off season training. Yeah. For football, like, yeah. there's just a lot, and we would we have to travel all the time with basketball. Oh, the only right. positive thing, other than playing basketball, would be like we get a lot of cool gear because they got a lot of gear we didn't get as football. Oh. Vice versa. Oh, nice. So you think you can still get out there and shoot some hoops with somebody? Yeah, I, I, still beat them. I do run. I run around with the uh, some of the guys that I played here at Texas with. We'll go yeah. play at the the rec or pick it up. Jaron actually is coming down on Friday, and he wants to. We'll play basketball with me, so we might go play a little bit. You think you can beat your Aunt Nicole in basketball? She was really good. Because Aunt Nicole good. played for UCLA. She was incredible. Well, it's hard for me to say. But she still got no, her. I can beat her. I feel like I could beat her. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could beat she's her. She's going to say, no, I don't think so. She, she is, She's never thought I could beat her, but I think I could beat her. But maybe not Jasmine or Jacqueline. Both of them. Oh, my God. Incredible. Well, Whole she, family is, like, athletic. I mean, it's insane. Jacqueline, she played at Oklahoma. Yeah, and for the Texas State. Texas State. Your own water. Yeah, and then yeah. Um, oh, Jasmine, forget it. She's I mean, at, this girl. Yeah, she's playing at Denver University. Um, she's doing well. Uh, actually, the reason why I got the puppies is because my parents are going to Puerto Rico to watch Jasmine play. Uh, she's going to Puerto Rico to play. Oh yeah, my God. they're good. Denver is going to play a tournament there, and so. They're gonna go out there and watch. And so I got these little guys uh, until the 23rd. Oh, so cute. All right, so one of my earliest, like, well, not earliest memories, but a memory I have, I wanna say it was in Orlando. Remember when I went down to see you guys? We were playing for- um, Nationals? Yeah, basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I remember you weren't feeling very well, and there's just a lot. I mean, it was a lot of pressure too. But I remember you saying, oh my God, I." I think I might be sick. And I thought, oh my God, he's like, let's just all go home, forget it. If you don't feel well, let's go home. And I remember your dad saying, well, then I guess you're gonna go down on that court and you're just gonna go throw up and you're gonna keep going because you're part of a team. So you throwing up, you have to just get past that and you're gonna find a way to do it. How do you feel like your dad has encouraged you? I mean, given you advice and encouraged you. I mean, I feel like from a very young age, he's been able to offer a lot of tips like that. I mean, that's not even a tip. That's an expectation that was set on you from a very young age. For sure, for sure. I think one thing about my dad, he kind of epitomizes toughness. Like he doesn't have to talk about being tough. He doesn't have to talk about being persevering, anything like that, or being a good father or anything like that, because you see it. Like watching him, just watching what he does, watching him 
train when he was playing in the NFL, watching him work with uh, when he was coaching, watching him now. Like he just works hard and he's always worked hard. And he's always expected us to work hard, to be tough, to not let little things get us down and to, to keep going no matter what. And it, yeah, he might have given tough love and seemed like a little cold at times, but he's very caring, very loving, and has uh, been there and like always yeah. has, yeah, he's he'll, he'll break it down, but it'll build you right back up. And I think that's the model he kind of goes with with his players too. I just, I feel like I was lucky enough to be around for some of that. And I remember conversations he'd have with you guys and Jim was very, very, it was just factual. It wasn't even like, I don't remember it being mean. I mean, of course you guys got to talk to him more. <laughs> I don't know, he was pretty mean to me though. He was mean to me too, but. Yeah, because he said you're a whiner. <laughs> I might've been a whiner when I was younger, but so were you, so whatever. I remember it was more factual with him and, um, but your mom and dad were always on the same page. So if one, if one said, this is the way it has to be, and especially in sports, there was no running to someone else to be like, here's something different. In fact, I think your mom would be tougher sometimes. I agree, my mom was definitely tougher on us. One, because she was around more, because my dad was off with work. Yeah, he was, Playing yeah. football and traveling. My mom was there constantly, so she was hard on us. And funny story about my mom, she was in a figure competition, I don't know if I told you, but she got third in one category and second right. in the other. And me thinking like, wow, it's your first competition, like great job. And then I remember my mom and I was like, asked her, hey, like, how do you feel? She's like, I'm kind of mad. Like, I should, I should have won. And I was like, yeah, that's us. That's just us. Like, yeah. we want to win, we're competitive. Like, it's no, oh, well, good job. You just showed up and did it. Like, no, we want to win. Whatever we do, we want to win. And, and you guys were just born that way because, you know, when you're little, you're just, you're just little and you just run around and you play in your kids. But you guys were all born with competition. I mean, I don't know how you and Jacqueline shared the same womb. I mean, come on, you guys are twins and you guys were competitive from the time you came out. Well, she came out bigger than me. She did. She, so. she, was, a, she was a hog. She, she, she was a piggy in there. She, so I had a chip she, on my shoulder since She then. kicked Jackson around, but then once you guys were born, that was it. Yeah, exactly. And then you got bigger than she was. So, <laughs> um, all right, I was going to ask about your lizard, but we have to cut that because you... That was annoying. <laughs> She's going to ask about lizards. I think I might possibly get them. You want to get another lizard? Thinking about it. I want to get more settled. Like, yeah. uh, but I think they're just cool. I think lizards are interesting. Like, just their things they do. Watching them eat. Yeah. Like, there's a lizard. Like, I like exotic lizards. I mean, also, I like Texas lizards, but I don't know how to, like, how to take care of them. I obviously, I can look it up. Yeah, but, you uh, can. And you can call my dad. Exactly. The herpetologist. He's, uh, he's told me, uh, he's taught me a lot about lizards and whatnot. And I, uh, whenever I have a question, I just I know. send an email. So Dad's like, they're like that. So you have memories of living in Buffalo when your dad played for the Bills. I do. do you feel like that kind of prepared you for living in Winnipeg a little bit? I mean, with the weather and everything, does it bring back memories from when you were little? Yeah, the only thing that's really different is that it's colder. And is that possible? Yeah, it's cold. It's so cold in Buffalo. It's colder. I mean, I should look up the temperature and tell you the difference. But it's colder. It's like a and bitter it cold. Snow as much. Yeah. So, like, when it snows, I love it. People are like, why do you like the snow? I was like, it's nice. Like, it looks nice. Everything looks nice. I know, it's so I know pretty. how to drive in the snow, so I'm like, fine. Where a lot of people are, are sliding. And I have a truck, so it's, it's nicer. As um, well. Do you remember when I used to go to Buffalo to visit them? And remember we opened the front door, and it was just like, it was just, <laughs> it was just a wall of snow. Like, you couldn't even get out of the house. That was crazy to me, and it, it, it's thinking back, to it now, I think I would be more amazed now just because like I'm an adult and I understand like, that's a ton of snow. It just was like, oh, that's what it, that's. And we had to, I mean, we did try to do a little shoveling and it didn't really do anything, but 
We had to wait for the snowplow people to come, and that could take forever because they were totally overloaded in, in houses. So for sure, we were stuck, and the kids were running around and around and around like crazy. Mm. I made a lot of extra cash. Uh, you did? I don't remember me that. Me and me and Jeremy used to shovel people's uh, driveways and their smart walk, their sidewalks uh, or their walkways to their door, and they would give us like two bucks or five bucks or whatever. <laughs> Whatever, $2 when you're a kid. It was fun lot. because it, it, it was something that like, kept us going. Like we were able to be active and make some money. So like when we go to the store, we would get, mommy, can I have this? And we were like, hey, mom, I have some money. I got my own money. I'm getting it. It's a statement. <laughs> it's not a question. There was a lot of energy in that household. In the Jeff Cohn household, oh my God, there was a yeah, lot of I probably of brought energy. the most of it. I don't know, I guess. Yeah, maybe. You were kind of, he was an instigator, so whatever. All right, so you signed with Winnipeg in what, February 2017? Yeah. Uh, are we staying? What are we doing? Yeah, what are the thoughts? Staying? Yeah. Well, I signed a two-year contract, so oh, okay. I've been there two years already. I played two years under one contract, then I I signed another one. Okay. And so I played one year into that. So I have another year in my, this contract. So technically I got four years of Winnipeg for sure. I mean, and it's not for sure, because they could cut me in the, the preseason, oh, but you yes. never know how that goes. Um, but yeah, I'm staying with Winnipeg, unless an NFL team calls and they want to pay because there's a window and want to sign me on, oh, then I'll go play. I mean, oh. how is the transition from NFL to CFL? Like, are there really differences? You know, I'm not a big sports person, but... <laughs> no, <laughs> there's not huge differences. When it's all said and done, it's football. But the big differences are the field is longer. So I want to say. Is it? Oh. Yeah. Don't uh, <laughs> don't quote me on the how long yeah. it is, but I think it's 120 yards. Wow. Long. Okay. Wow. Um, and then wide. I know it's 65 yards wide, wow. opposed to the NFL on the field. It's 100 yards long. Okay. And it's 53 yards wide. Wow. So. A full 12 yards. So it's like more work for you. It's a lot more running. It's a lot more running. There's an extra player on the field. So you got an extra receiver, an extra DB. As far as the defense, you have to be a yard off the ball. Whereas in down south. Wow. In the NFL, you're right on you're like right on the ball. You can't be past it, but you're right up on it. They don't measure that or anything on you. They just look and they, they see, can like, see it. They can see it. Because the ref stands like at the side and watches. To see it, so if you like jump the snap or something, they'll they'll throw the flag like that. Wow! So that just sounds like a little more work earning your plays it's more. Fun. It's oh. more fast paced. There's three downs instead of four. Oh. So like, if you don't get it on, on the second down, that's third down is your fourth down. You gotta punt the ball. Oh wow! Oh, people are gonna learn something because I didn't know that. I know my girlfriends will be like, not all my girlfriends, some of my girlfriends. So yeah, this is kind of a silly question, I think. So, just from someone that's not 100% sports minded. So how do you go into, cause you're defensive end. So how do you go into planning to tackle somebody? Is there like a mindset you have or do you watch videos on that player to kind of prepare or like the people you're going to be tackling? No, tackling I think when you're tackling, it's just, you get them down to the ground. You, there's technique and working on it or whatever, but once you know what your technique is, like, you can tackle almost anybody the same. Some people you need to tackle harder, and some you don't. Like, some people are bigger, and, you've got, and they're strong runners, and so you hit them hard. Then they know you're gonna hit them hard, and then they're like, oh, okay. They're going but do back. you study that, like, in weeks before, or like a couple weeks before, do you go over tapes? Or? You only get to see things a week before. Like, because you play a new team every week. There's 18 weeks in the CFL season. So you're watching a new team each week, or sometimes we play teams back to back, or we'll play, mm -hmm. some teams will play three times. Two teams in our division will play three times. Wow. But then the year. <laughs> We've got puppy noise in the background. You guys. <laughs> All right, the so that's- The mean girls are together. The mean girls. They're so cute. <laughs> You guys, quiet on the set, please. So there's no type of like serious planning. It's just like, this is my technique. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah, because with tackling, tackling is all such a big part of the game. It's just, it's, it's what you do. Like we've already worked on your technique on how you tackle. You're not, I mean, game tackle, you want to, right. everybody wants to go tackle certain guys, like, especially if they're a strong runner. We want to make sure we get more helmets, more guys on them. 
Well, just as an auntie, I still worry about you getting, you know, hurt and injured. So, but I want you to play as long as you can. Do you, I mean, your dad had, uh, what, a 14 year career? 15, 15 year career. Yeah. So do you want to play that long? No, I, I started, uh, I'm a little older than my dad was when he started playing. Like I'm saying, like when I started playing, to he, when he started playing, so he was able to play long. Um, no, I kind of have a, that's a really unheard of long career, right? Yeah, yeah. No, well, it's, it's I mean, well, no, not, I know. There's I know not a lot of people that right. do it, but there's a there's a lot of guys, a lot of Hall of Famers and pro pro boards have done it. They've had long careers. Um, but yeah, like quarterbacks go that long. Defensive linemen normally don't play that long. It's yeah. just a lot on your body that shows how well my dad took care of his body. But I also have things that I want to do outside of football, as far as um, like life at the football. I want to go and get my MBA in finance. Possibly want to become an athletic director, so there's steps I have to take to get to that point, you know? So I'd love to play ball forever, but football only lasts you so long in your life. There's going to be a time when you're done. There's going to be a time when you have to focus on things outside of football and focus on building yourself a life outside of football. And a lot of, for a lot of guys, that transition's hard, but I don't know how hard it would be just because when it's time, I'll make the decision before my body makes the decision. All right, but you've had already, you've had a couple of surgeries. Mm -hmm. I have, I've had two pec surgeries. It's not okay. hurting? Uh, no, I had a back surgery, which actually really helped a lot. Really? You know, my back could hurt for like, I had a herniated, herniated disc in my back. I had a herniated disc in my back uh, for like eight years, and I got that surgery. And it's insane, yeah, and you're a baby, and leg. you're so young to me, it's insane. This mm -hmm. is such a hard sport. Mm -hmm. On I'm just playing both bodies. sports back growing up, playing yeah. both sports and doing so much. It's just tough. It's hard on your body, but I mean, in the long run, it's been fun and I think I would change it. Didn't, weren't you, wasn't there a question, not a question, I don't think your dad or your mom or dad would ever allow it, but wasn't there a possibility of you being promoted out of high, straight out of high school to play basketball, professional basketball? No, no not professionally. Uh, but I did get offered by some good uh, colleges and whatnot. Okay, the best question. So how does it feel to win the Grey Cup with oh this team? Gosh. The Grey Cup was amazing. It was, so you remember that story talk, talked about being sick. I actually got sick before I like, started coming out. Oh yeah, fever. yeah, when we were talking about you, yeah. Yeah. When I had, you were little. Yeah, I, had, I got sick before the Grey Cup, but I had a fever. Uh, I started, oh God, yes. yeah, I started coming over it. That the day before, but I still felt really crappy, so I did, uh, I got an IV, and uh, it really helped me out, like it hydrated me, I felt way better. I felt great after that, the IV, it made me feel Well, better. plus adrenaline, you've got to get some adrenaline, once you get yeah. in that field and you get suited up. Yeah, the adrenaline had me going, and I was super excited, it was just, it was an incredible experience, because I seen my dad in the championships. And he won back-to-back -back championships. And I'm going to tell you now, we're going for back-to-back -back championships. Um, but... Um, I got to come to that game. Yeah, you do. You got to. It was yeah. amazing. It's just everything you wished for to win the championship. We're going to get big rings. Like, That's people, awesome. people don't respect the CFL as much as they respect the NFL. And I understand. People are American. Oh, what other league could be as good right. as the NFL? But the talent in the, in the CFL is very good. And it's a very good league. And at times, I think it's more entertaining than the NFL. I mean, because it's faster paced. And it's a little more difficult with the bigger field, yard up the ball. To win a championship in the CFL, in a professional football league, with eight other teams striving for that. Yeah. It's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. And we were, we were able to call ourselves the champs. Yay! So proud of you. Are you so proud? Let me make sure it's foamy. Oh my god, look at them. <laughs> Where are you going? Go with your dad. Come on. Go, go, go. Nala, come here. Okay, now let's ask our next question. So what are your goals now? What's what's the next step besides playing next year and winning? Um, well, the big thing for me is to put together a, a full healthy season. I did it my first year, but the last two years I've been injured and been on this thing called the six games. So I missed six games. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I also want to get put together a 10 plus sack season. I think that the way I've been rushing, I can easily do it. I just think I, 
there's rushes that I needed to finish and yeah. whatnot and get the numbers. That's one of my biggest things. Sacks are important for a team and I think getting to a quarterback is important. Uh, but I want to, in 2020, I want to put together a 10 plus sack season. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be working for this off season. And then, obviously, like I said before, we want to get a breakup again. I mean, that's your goal. As After you get a taste of it, I think uh, we can do it again. We're putting the pieces back together. Guys are coming back to play again for the team. So we're yeah. going to have a good team again next year. So working out in the off season, you've got to keep up with it, mm -hmm. right? You cannot have slack, to. even though you want to do a little bit of traveling and you know try to relax a little bit. But yeah. how many do you put in a certain amount of hours a day? No, it's just more, just got to be really intentional on what I want to do. So with, I mean, obviously that's with that goal. Yeah. That you, yeah. So increasing flexibility, improving strength, speed, uh, agility, being able to be a better defensive end and outside linebacker than I was the year before. So that's so one thing I'm gonna do. Can you, like, do they have you, with the CFL, do they have you speak maybe weekly with a, with a trainer about, with your goals? And no. do they give you a regime? No, we do it, we, a lot of, I mean, our strength coach will send us stuff, but a lot of us do it on our own, especially because we're out here in the States. Half, is, half of the team is in the States, half of the team is in okay. our Canadian. Um, so we, we get on with our own trainers and kind of, we're expected as pros right. to come back in shape and ready to go. No, no. That's all right. It's so, I mean, it. since half the team lives as lives and is from the United States, I mean, obviously in the off season lives here at home, uh -huh. um, wherever their home is. Um, so they, they just, it's kind of like, like me as a flight attendant, they put us up uh -huh. and we don't have to worry about it. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I mean, is that part of the deal? You get, you get your own little space for the whole season. No, we're required to actually get a spot, so we gotta oh, use this thing called Kijiji. It's kind of like Craigslist, find a spot. And a lot of people are Bombers fans in Winnipeg, so they're gonna accommodate you. And people won't like to rent out their players to the Bombers. Uh, people like to help us to be successful hmm. out there. So I thought yeah. for sure they would provide you with like one of the sweets thing, or you know, one of those. I mean, with their younger guys, when you first get out there, they yeah. pro they provide a hotel and they provide a dorm during training camp. Oh, so yeah. So All right. Well, yeah, that makes. I mean, that makes sense as a flight attendant too. Then when you know, once you're in your city of choice, it's your responsibility to get your crash pad or commute or do whatever you want. All right. <laughs> this is like that Jimmy Fallon segment where he has like <laughs> bunnies or puppies. Well, this is my. Uh, and a million on one lap. Ah! This is my Ted Hendricks Award. It's an award given out for the best defensive end in the country in, yeah. back in 2013. I won it. Uh, obviously, Winston's interested in it. He's uh, proud. We're so proud. You're proud of Uncle Jackson? Are you? Thank you, buddy. I was given this. Ted Hendricks was a, a really good defensive end. He played for, uh, he played at Miami, the University of Miami. Yeah. And, uh, was it they used to call him? Uh, he was like dominant. I think they called him the Mad Stork. Stork. Yeah. He's a big, tall, long guy. Yeah. Well, he's like really good at Miami. And then he played in Oakland, and you know how Oakland's their style. They're yeah. tough guys, aggressive, and all that. And that's kind of how Ted Hendricks. That was 2013. So. Yeah. So that was my wow. senior year in college, and I wow. won this award. And it's amazing. So proud. So it was awesome. And Mr. Hendricks is a great man. And it was fun. It was a fun event down in Miami. What an honor. Yeah, it was an honor. My family came out. Uh, so it was just nice to have them with me as well. And win an award that was a, such a big time award. And some of the people, I mean, if you want to show, yeah. show that. And some of the people that have won it as well as myself are very highly touted athletes and guys that, are, that, that had great careers in the NFL, great careers in college, and just some of the best, top of the top. And that's why it was a, a huge honor to win this award. And it's a huge honor to have the Jeffco family be a part of my life. What a blessing. Yeah, we mm -hmm. love you. We love you too. My family loves the Jeffco family and I just feel very blessed to have you guys in my life. All of you, including Aunt Nicole. I have to talk about how I even met Aunt Nicole. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about that first. Okay, that concludes our interview. Yay, <laughs> we did it. See, this is how 
how you play football. Mean, just like this, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> this is, these are football dogs. <laughs> 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 <laughs>